As I've covered many times on the channel before, invasive species are one of the leading causes of extinctions. Despite this, there are often many factors as to why a species goes extinct, with some examples being habitat loss, hunting, and of course competing with invasive species. A great example of an animal that went extinct due to many factors is the thylacine, as it was not only losing its habitat and being hunted, but it also had to compete with the invasive species that the Europeans brought with them. Around the globe there are plenty of introduced animals that have directly caused extinctions, but of course it is not the animal's fault. Invasive species are often wrongly villainized and are almost seen as pests or vermin. These invasive animals are simply trying to survive and are only in the wrong ecosystem because of humans. In this video I will be going through just a few non-native creatures that have led to the extinction of native species, as I will be going through three introduced and invasive creatures that have directly led to extinctions. And for our first species we will be heading over to Guatemala, and more specifically Lake Atitlan, as we have the Atitlan grebe. This bird was found in Lake Atitlan, and this lake is known for being very picturesque. German explorer and naturalist Alexander von Humboldt called it the most beautiful lake in the world, and still today it's a very important lake when it comes to culture and also the tourism industry. From the lake you can see mountains and volcanoes, and in recent years it has become renowned for cliff diving. The Atitlan grebe also went by the name of giant grebe, and looks very similar in size and shape to the pie-billed grebe. The pie-billed grebe is its closest relative, and is a great reminder of this bird's existence. This bird was endemic to Lake Atitlan, and spent most of its day hunting for aquatic creatures such as crustaceans and small fish. This bird's extinction is a relatively recent extinction, but over the past few hundred years it has always been rare. There were thought to be around 200 individuals in 1960, and this went down very quickly to 80 in 1965. Thanks to conservation efforts and protections, the population recovered to 210 in 1973, but only three years later both this bird and the people of Guatemala would face a major catastrophe. On the 4th of February 1976, a major earthquake hit Guatemala. This earthquake occurred at around 3.01am, and because most people were in bed, this contributed to the high death toll of around 23,000 people. This earthquake left many people homeless and without electricity, and it also fractured Lake Atitlan's lake bed. An underwater drain led to a fall in the water level of the lake, and also led to a decrease in the number of grebes. In 1983 only 32 individuals were left, and at this point most of the birds were hybrids with the pie-billed grebe. Unfortunately for these grebes there was not enough food for them to successfully bounce back, and this was all due down to an introduction that took place in 1958. As I've already covered, because this lake was so beautiful, it was very popular with tourists. This meant that the locals were always trying to entice new tourists, and one of the best ways to do this was through the fishing industry. Sport fishing is very popular around the world, and this is especially the case in North America. Pan American Airways convinced the government to entice fishermen to the area by populating the lake with invasive yet popular sport fish, such as largemouth and smallmouth bass. These fish are so popular with sport fishermen, mainly due down to their aggression. Not only are these fish aggressive, but they're also top aquatic predators, and fed on all of the same foods as the Atitlan grebe. This meant that there was less food to go around, and led to the direct decline of the Atitlan grebe. If this wasn't enough, the bass also preyed on all of the creatures that controlled the bacteria levels in the lake, and this led to algal blooms and pollution, and it was said that there was a noticeable stench coming from the lake. All these factors eventually led to the extinction of this bird, as the last two individual birds were spotted in 1989, and since then they have been declared extinct. It is quite sad to see such a rare and interesting bird go extinct, but at least it didn't go out without a fight. It took a natural disaster and invasive species to wipe it out, and as they often hybridised with the pie-billed grebe, its DNA still lives on in one of its closest relatives. But for our next story, we will be heading to an area that's often talked about when it comes to invasive species, and that is, of course, Hawaii. Because at one point Hawaii was separated from the rest of the world for millions of years, it does have a very unique island ecosystem. It's home to many plants and animals that can't be found anywhere else in the world, but just like any other island ecosystem, it is very fragile. Outside invaders can have a massive negative impact on island ecosystems, and this often results in many unique creatures going extinct. One of the best examples of this is on the island of Guam, where the introduction of the brown tree snake led to many native birds going extinct. 
Hawaii has had a very similar story, but instead of one problem invasive species, there are quite a few. Hawaii has had problems with invasive mammals, birds and fish, and these have led to massive declines in their native species. These invasive species don't just negatively affect the native species by competing with them, but in some cases they also negatively affect them by hybridizing with them. One of the most famous cases is with the Hawaiian duck, which is known to hybridize with introduced mallards. This leads to a decrease in the Hawaiian duck's numbers, but unfortunately these aren't the only birds to suffer. When it comes to native animals in Hawaii, the birds are the creatures that have suffered the most, as there is a saddening long list of recently extinct Hawaiian birds. Instead of focusing on one bird in particular, I will be focusing on them all, as there are two species that have directly led to their downfall. One of these introduced species are feral hogs, and the other is introduced mosquitoes. Pigs were first introduced into the Hawaiian Islands around 1,500 years ago, and since then they have caused significant damage. Not only do they destroy native plants and have a negative effect on farming, but they also help the spread of mosquitoes. Hawaii has no indigenous mosquito species, but instead mosquitoes were unintentionally introduced in the 1800s. They found their way over in ships from Europe, and these mosquitoes were carrying diseases. These introduced mosquitoes are known to carry avian pox and avian malaria, and these diseases weaken the bird and cause them to stop feeding, and this eventually means that they succumb to starvation, cold weather, or predation. This is one of the main reasons why so many of Hawaii's native birds have gone extinct. But what does that have to do with feral hogs? Well, one of the things that you need to know about mosquitoes is that they often lay their eggs in stagnant water. Their larvae develop underwater before eventually emerging in their adult form. When these pigs would feed on the starchy cores of native trees, they would leave large nutrient-rich rain-filled cavities. These cavities were the perfect places for mosquitoes to lay their eggs and led to a boom in their numbers. An increase in mosquitoes led to an increase in avian diseases, and this was enough to wipe out many native birds. Unfortunately, these mosquitoes are still causing problems on Hawaii today, but hopefully many of the native birds that are still alive today are able to bounce back. But for our final story, we will be heading over to China, and more specifically Dian Lake, as we have the Yunnan Lake Newt. This newt had a very striking red and black coloration, and was found in both Dian Lake and the surrounding area. Unfortunately, very little is known about this amphibian, as it disappeared all too quickly. Like most other amphibian species, this newt was able to breathe through its skin, and although this ability comes in very handy, it also makes them very sensitive to pollution. Pollution is just one of the many reasons why this newt disappeared, but it wasn't the only endemic species to go extinct. Diane Lake was once home to many fish that couldn't be found anywhere else in the world, but many of these species are extinct today. Their extinction along with the Yunnan Lake Newt was due down to many different factors. One of the main and most important factors was pollution, as not only was the marsh system around the lake destroyed in the Great Leap Forward movement, but large amounts of soil were dumped into the lake for duck farming. This lake is also situated next to a giant city which worsens the pollution, and this was enough to eradicate most of the fish in the lake. This was also the story with the Yunnan Lake Newt, but they weren't helped by the introduction of invasive fish and invasive amphibians. A large number of non-native creatures such as grass carp and noodle fish were introduced, and these invasive fish not only competed with the native species, but also preyed on them directly. This was enough to completely eradicate this amphibian, and it's been declared extinct since 1979. In the end, really, this amphibian stood little chance, but hopefully we can learn from the mistakes made in Lake Diane. If you know of any other creatures that could have made it on this list, then let me know down in the comments below, because there are really quite a few. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.